True story. I once went three straight years without eating chicken at all. I just couldn't meal prep it in a way where it was tasty, convenient, and would actually keep in the fridge long enough for me to go through it all without turning it into just a bunch of rubbery hockey pucks and get disgusting until I stumbled upon this procedure, which I'm gonna show you right now, and it has been a total game changer for me. We're gonna start by preheating the oven to 400 degrees, get that process started nice and early. And then we're gonna take an oil with a higher smoke point, something like avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil, pour a bit of that into two cast iron pans is what I use because I cook a lot of chicken at once. If you're using a smaller amount, you could probably get away with just one to start. Then we'll want to get a good collection of spices. I use just plain old salt, smoked paprika, garlic powder, and a chicken rub for the most part. I use a larger Pyrex baking dish and I put down a heavy layer of garlic powder in the bottom of this thing to start. From there, we're gonna start the process of just trimming the fat off of the chicken breasts with a knife. Some people might want to wear gloves for this. I choose to just do it barehanded, wash my hands after the fact. I'm just grabbing anything that I know I'm not gonna to wanna to eat once this gets cooked. So just obvious pieces of fat or gristly bits, tendons, etc. You don't have to go too crazy here, just get the big parts. And then once each piece is done, place it in the pan, press it in firmly just to get that garlic powder firmly coated on the underside. From here, I will take my knife hand, which should still be clean, and go ahead and turn the burners on to around medium high. This is usually gonna be somewhere around six or seven, just to get these pans nice and hot, but without burning all the oil off. And now this is where the magic happens. We're gonna be very generous with the salt, the garlic powder, the smoked paprika, and also the chicken rub on this top side of the chicken. There's garlic powder on the underside. We're gonna thoroughly coat the top side with all four of these spices. From here, I tend to get a little bit lazy. So you can use tongs. I use my hand knowing I'm gonna wash it soon, but I flip each chicken breast over and I'm thoroughly coating the underside, the sides, every last square centimeter of each piece of chicken with garlic powder. You can be more varied with the spices that you use here if you want to. You can use the collection of the other ones that you've been using before. You can introduce different ones at this point. The idea here is to thoroughly coat every last square inch of this chicken breast with these spices. The idea behind doing this is with the next step, these spices are going to create a crust around the chicken breast that will hold in moisture and keep it tasty for longer. Now what we wanna do is get just a little bit of water on our hands. We're gonna walk over to our cast iron pans, which should be nice and warm, and we're gonna listen for some sizzle. like that as we splash the pan so that we know they are hot enough for us to use. Be careful with this also, that oil can and will spatter and it hurts. Our goal is to make sure the pans are hot enough so that when we place the chicken breast on it, they get seared rather than cooking slowly. We want that kind of charred exterior that these spices are gonna help form that crust out of. Once all the pieces are in there, make sure your pans aren't smoking too much. These look good. A little bit more than that, you might wanna turn it down. You don't want things to burn. And then I'm gonna use the microwave to set a timer for five minutes. During this time, you can walk away, but do periodically come back if it's your first time doing it, just to make sure that the pans aren't smoking too much. It will set off smoke alarms. It will be a giant mess. You want to avoid that. Once our five minute timer goes off, we're gonna come back and then just methodically flip over each piece with a pair of tongs so that the raw side gets some time on the hot cast iron pan. Quick reminder, now is also a great time to turn these burners off. And then we are going to very carefully don our oven mitts, hopefully with a little bit of wrist guard in there as well. The extra long ones are always nice for this and toss it in that oven, which should be totally done preheating by now to 400 degrees. Now we are going to set the microwave timer for 24 minutes. These chicken breasts are pretty thick. If yours aren't quite this thick, you might be able to get away with something closer to 18 to 20. Once your timer goes off, let's get back to the oven, open it up, stand back as you do. There's gonna be a lot of heat and steam that comes out of here. And let's admire our handiwork as we pull out the rack and examine, ah, look at that. Six wonderful, gorgeous, slightly charred, awesome, juicy chicken breasts perfection. You can place these back on the stovetop or on a silicon trivet to let them cool. I would honestly give them another 15 to 20 minutes sitting in the pan. It's going to be tempting to cut into them right away, but if you let it sit, they'll continue to cook just a little bit more and really kind of seal the deal. After just a little bit of cool down time, it's time to eat. So stick these guys on the food scale. I'll cut off little bits just to make sure I get the correct portion size. And then I'm just gonna cut them into little bite-sized chunks. From here, if I'm reheating this, I can throw these in the microwave with whatever else is part of the meal. Usually about 90 seconds is enough. I'll put the leftovers in my Tupperware container of choice to go into the fridge and then plate up this meal. About eight ounces of chicken breast with some free veg thrown in. Celery, onion, carrot, amazingly tasty stuff. A Little bit of extra salt on there just for the kick. Mwah, perfect. Total time for this process is about 35 minutes for me usually. It's about seven minutes of actually doing stuff and around 25 to 30 minutes of waiting for everything to cook. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. And while you're here, check the link in the description to grab my ultimate guide to kitchen gear. In there, you can find links to get your own cast iron pans if you don't have any and all kinds of other goodies, many of which you probably haven't even thought of.